Hello and welcome to DCP SideQuest episode number 31. 31. The 2020 kickoff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? The, yeah. 2020, I was going to say 2021 kickoff. Not yet. Not yet. Well, that would be that. future talk right there, Watts. <laughs> yeah. Are you from That's Australia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, there you're ahead. Man, I had it twisted. <laughs> well, I know they're in the future. I don't know by how much, because, you know, future talk. Yeah. Also, Eric isn't on the show today because he's still in 2019, sadly. So <laughs> yes. hopefully he's going to make it to this up. decade soon. <laughs> yeah, that's how time works. <laughs> that's definitely how time works. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Pretty good. My back is healing. So I've been able to actually sit up to play games, which is nice. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, Friar yeah, could really do the try hard, uh, try hard sitting position now. He can lean forward yeah. slightly. Oh, I can't <laughs> lean forward. That's out of the question. <laughs> okay, of the maybe, question. Not, maybe not. It's more of like a super reclined couch <laughs> with my feet up on the coffee table kind of thing. You got um, the like nice. Stardew Valley pose. Yeah. 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 Just farming some crops. <laughs> but it's been perfect because I just got a Xbox One X for Christmas. Nice. And uh, combining that with uh, Game Pass means that, you know, as soon as you boot that thing up you basically have a ton of games to play true so i've been playing all sorts of great games i'm you know the big screen tv in the living room you know just making an absolute slob of myself in the living room that's great that's great and, you know with like uh gears of war 5 and mortal kombat x i played all the way through on there and mortal i actually i liked mortal kombat 10 so much that i bought mortal kombat 11 uh, for the Switch, which is terrible. Don't buy that. And then I bought it again. <laughs> I bought it again on the uh, X, which is great. Definitely get that one. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so bad on the Switch. Like, it looks so bad. I thought it would be great because, like, I could just, you know, if I want to play on the Switch, I could go up to the yeah. bed bedroom and play in bed or, you know, whatever. It looks, it's so bad. It runs at a choppy frame rate. It looks horrific. Like, it's just... I, it plays okay, so you, you can play it like in handheld mode, and it doesn't look too bad doesn't because it's on a really small bad. screen. <laughs> but man, you put that thing on a TV, and it's like, what resolution are we running at here? Like 480p? It looks oh, rough. That's rough, man. And then you put you you compare that to on the Xbox, and it's running at 4K, like smooth as butter. So it's you know it's a rough comparison to go back to back on yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. So is this the first Xbox you've owned since? Like Xbox One came out, or yeah, yeah. I bought the launch edition of Xbox One, okay, and really didn't play with it too much. Wow. But it's really Game Pass that kind of made me think. You know, I I wouldn't mind having an X down in the TV room. So this is like, like five years room. later. Yeah, but essentially the same platform. No, this is very interesting because the Xbox has changed dramatically over the past five years, like from it operating has, yeah. system yeah. and. A lot. The interface yeah. and how it changed, how the it feels. The UI is so much easier to use. Yeah, so I'm really curious as like a as an experience. So you re you really liking it? Yeah, I'm loving it. You know, it for me, it's very complementary to my PC gaming, right? Because I already have Game Pass Ultimate, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy. So yeah. this having this is like kind of my my side bitch in the <laughs> living room. It's perfect. <laughs> Living room. Not side even bitch. not even side chick. Brian went straight for the side bitch. Well, it is Xbox One X. So <laughs> <laughs> because like uh, some of the games are really good. Like Ori in the Blind Forest. If you're playing that on your PC, if you boot it up on your Xbox One, it's it don't you tell save me. It's shared. Don't no, cross save. It's, it's got cross saves. Yeah, <laughs> not all games do that, which is annoying. Um, but some of them do, and it's really convenient because you can be up in your office, you know, playing on your PC, or you can go down down into the living room. And like a game like Ori, you know, I don't need a 2080 Ti no. <laughs> experience. You know, it's yeah. and it actually it's almost preferable to me to play on the big screen because I got you know a really nice TV in my living room, uh, one of the LG. OLED screens, mm -hmm. which is really nice. It's just it's absolutely a gorgeous screen. Yeah. So on a game like that, it's almost preferable to me to play it in the living room as opposed to on the PC. Right. However, there is a yeah. new 360 hertz monitor that's coming out that possibly Ori, that. Ori in the Blind Forest could take advantage of. <laughs> 360 <laughs> hertz. So we both have experience with 240 hertz <laughs> Yes, monitors. we do. Yes. 
And I actually, I, I, I love it for like competitive games, but for most games that I'm playing, I'd rather be playing on my 1440p monitor where it's kind of a, it's not quite 4k resolution. It's not as sharp as a 4k screen. Yeah. But it's running at 165 Hertz. So like, it's kind of like this middle ground. Of, yeah. Like it's got a high f- refresh rate, but it's also got, it's sharper than 1080p. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd be willing to take a step down resolution wise for 360 hertz. I don't even know if I could tell the difference between 240 and 360. <laughs> That's the thing. Because for me, <laughs> it's like 60 to 120. It's like, okay, wow. It's like going from 30 to 60. And then yeah, yeah. 144 yeah. to 200, it, the gap closes significantly. But above yeah. 200, I don't, th- to three. <laughs> I don't think you can tell 200 to 240 and especially 300. If I was like a professional CSGO player, I'd be all over this thing. Sure. Right? Like, yeah, this yeah. is obviously the monitor that I want. Yeah. But I'm not that. <laughs> I am a, I'm a high functioning. I, I was about to say a word I'm not supposed to say on the internet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a pro gamer. <laughs> you know, like if, if I'm having trouble with a game, I, I just reduce the difficulty like no problem like i have no problem doing that i want to see the story <laughs> you have to game. increase the frames man yeah, like, yeah that's what, maybe that's what it is maybe you need the extra like you need the 300 plus frames prior and then it just yeah. kicks in for you <laughs> well i will say that when i did when i i still have my 240 hertz monitor hooked up to my pc and i will Naturally. use it if i am playing crucible like all day right mm-hmm. if like i'm gonna get into like a destiny 2 crucible session all day like it is clearly a better experience to me than 165 hertz yeah. on a 14 plus C monitor. You get fine detail of the netcode happening in real time to you, seeing how much right. delay is actually in the networking. So you you're like, wow, see how bad you're getting screwed. This is incredible. <laughs> it's like empirical data right in front of you. It's amazing. Um, but like for everything else, I'm all about the 1440p. And actually, I what I really want is to upgrade to a 4K high refresh rate monitor, right 4k right? 144 I, I think yeah i think that I, what i really need to do is wait a generation for video cards better video cards to come out mm-hmm. because you know i have a 4k tv that my pc is hooked up to too sometimes so if i'm playing like tomb raider or something like that like a slower paced action adventure game i'll play it on the big screen tv with a controller yeah and do it that way but i'm not really hitting like i'm, I'm maybe 60 70 80 frames with a 2080 ti See, that's so it's like that's why I haven't upgraded because I, I still have a 10 ATI. I stream at 1080p. There's no reason for me to upgrade beyond that at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. Unless I want the ray tracing. And I don't think many games are going to. Well, I mean, the, the, yeah, if a, bun- if a bunch of games came out where like it started becoming the new kind of standard, then you'd be like, all right. Yeah. Maybe now I'll I'll upgrade. Yeah. Then I'll be like, the problem right. with ray tracing, though, is you're taking such a performance hit to play with it. Which, Especially at 4K. See, that's the double umph right there. Yeah, it is an umph too. It's, <laughs> it's like, like oh. this looks amazing, but I'm a little bit nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I feel like the next generation for me. I'm I'm holding out on like a 3080 Ti, assuming it's not like four thousand dollars. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm gonna buy it anyway, but I'm gonna be mad about it. <laughs> 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 But yeah, I mean, also with the new consoles coming out next year, yep. is they're both going to support ray tracing. So I think it'll be it'll be a more mm-hmm. standard um, feature in games. Mm-hmm. So like right now, I think there's like six or seven games total that yeah. support it. So, yeah. And like some of them you don't even want to play. And, <laughs> you know, like, and then some of them that have it, you don't want to turn it on. Like Tomb Raider takes a massive nosedive when you turn that on. Mm. Mm. Control looks fantastic, though. Like, Control is almost, like, I can't even, I don't even want to play Control without it. It's so good looking. Interesting. Is, do we know if Cyberpunk is ray tracing enabled? Pretty sure, yeah. yeah. Pretty sure it is. Now Tafty's like, hmm, Crap. <laughs> maybe I do upgrade. Do you think maybe, you CES know, is going to, do you think CES is going to announce something, a successor to a 2080 Ti? Well, so there's already rumors yeah. about the next hit, generation of hit NVIDIA. Me. Okay, oh, so the car the cards that they're talking about are not gaming focused cards they're like more like oh the workstation the high end production stuff but that's the stuff that gets trickled down into the gaming stuff yeah, right they're quadra supra 50% something. more power 50, or 
fifty percent better performance, fifty percent less power. Okay. So less less juice running through the card, so cooler temps, but fifty percent better performance. Which is a fucking massive upgrade, and I don't know if I believe it. <laughs> That's the thing. Every time they say something like, "Oh, it's fifty percent," I'm like, "What?" strange testing format did you put together to get this number that isn't actually real world right <laughs> you know what i mean like right yeah in this one particular instance where you're looking at this particular direction in this video game we got a 50 percent increase yeah yeah but i mean we could still be a while out before the next generation comes out but yeah i think they'll come out this year this year yeah but it may be you know maybe summertime it may be fall or it could be early 2021. Who knows at this point? Yeah, for me, I'm just, I prefer frame rate over visuals. Yeah, I guess it depends what it depends what kind of game it is. And it depends how much of a dump the performance takes. Yeah. Like, I'll take yeah. a little bit of a dump, but not a giant dump. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I, I yeah. completely agree. For me, like a 3D action game, like Control or Tomb Raider, like I'm happy playing that at 60 FPS. And I'd rather be playing it on a big screen TV with a controller in my hand sitting on a couch right mm -hmm. like that's just to me like perfect situation for a game like that if i'm playing an fps especially if i want to be competitive at it i want as high a frame rate as i can get yeah because it just is smoother yeah, it just feels better yeah absolutely but you know even the next gen consoles are going to support 120 hertz it's still up to the developers to enable that yeah but the the hardware is going to support it yeah I hope and you can buy TVs now that support 120 hertz too. Right over HDMI. Yeah, which is dope. High frame so rates are. About, just bought a TV for the living room last year. <laughs> <laughs> I might be in the market pretty soon. I'm gonna have to yeah. consider one of those 124Ks. Hmm. 120 hertz OLED 4 4K TV. Right, and then next year they'll be like, "Well, 8K is really where it's at." Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's. <laughs> It's getting crazy. All these consoles yeah. support 8K. Why shouldn't our TV <laughs> support 8K? Right? Yeah. They are going to support 8K. Yeah. There'll be one but, game that comes out at like actual 8K. And then be like, well, right? gotta make the TV. Yeah. 8K capture right. cards. <laughs> to me, it's, it's hilarious to me that YouTubers are out there making 8K videos. Right. Like, I think there's one or two TVs available that will show 8K content. Yeah, I had an idea last night on stream that I should bring back my Zer videos, but it's yeah. upscaled to 8K. So it's the only okay. Zer videos 8K. in 8K <laughs> on YouTube. I think that's a great idea. And it would be like 30 seconds long. Idea. Here's Zer, he's placed, he's got some crap. Thanks for watching 8K. Yeah, yeah have fun rendering that. <laughs> <laughs> on my new system, I might be able to do it. You definitely can. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Have you talked about that, Tefty? Do we know? What are the specs? Let us know. What are you building? I currently have all the hardware. Uh, actually, I'm waiting for a couple pieces of uh, of hard drives that are coming today. So I basically have all the hardware. It's going to be a 3900X uh, X570 AMD rig. I got an Asus mm -hmm. uh, Prime X570 Pro motherboard. I didn't go for the full bells and whistles because I'm not planning on doing any serious overclocking. I never use Wi-Fi on one of these. <laughs> <laughs> I never use Wi-Fi on one of these boards, and I don't need 8 million USB ports on the back of it either. So I went with like a like a $200 board, not one of these $400 boards from the 570 series. Yeah, um, yeah and I got a – I just went with like a, a 1660 Super uh, video card for 4K editing because this is going to be a streaming slash video editing rig, not a um, gaming rig. Even right. though it totally could be a gaming rig with a 3900X. But I'm – I'm still a fan of the dual PC setup because every now and then one of these new games comes out where it's like, oh, we just messed up some driver in your system. Guess what? You got to reboot yeah. to make it normal. And like, yeah. since I play games almost always on release day, like that will eventually happen at some point. So I still rock a dual PC setup. So. Which PC has your Discord open on it? So my gaming PC is Discord right here. Okay. And that's being mm. captured yeah to the streaming PC. So it goes, right. the, the audio goes to the HDMI on the for the capture, yeah. yeah. I was doing it the opposite way for a long time is my Discord was on my streaming PC, which is fine, because you know, capture it, yeah. you know, it's not a big deal. Uh -huh. But what I realized was every time I wanted to do anything with Discord, I had to go to the other keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I could just set up hotkeys on the gaming keyboard, like, what, 
what, why didn't I think of this before? <laughs> <laughs> done and done. Yeah. Uh, so you got to be excited. New PC. Oh, I'm very New excited. PC is always exciting. Yeah. So I, it's, it's exciting just to have a fresh start, you know, where you're like, you just in, install all the things you only just need, mm -hmm. not the things that you've accumulated throughout yep. the year. <laughs> yeah. This last rig I built three years ago during uh, Rise of Iron. Rise of Iron came out and I built this rig for streaming. Really? Yeah. So it's a three year old. It's PC. amazing that that is only three years old because it seems archaic now. <laughs> I know, right? Right? Doesn't it? It would. Can I ask, like, how much it costs, like the the processor alone? Uh, five hundred, but I got ten percent off. Five hundred dollars for a six core processor. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, that one, the i seven six eight hundred K back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I think it was actually four hundred. Four hundred. Yeah, mm. around four. So somewhere around there. Yeah. For a hundred dollars more, three mm. years later, you got twelve cores with faster processing. Oh yeah, like, it's faster. night and day. Yeah. It's amazing. AMD has completely shaken up the computer industry and in ways yeah. that are really benefiting users. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens with it in the future. The thing is, Intel is still optimized first by most games, it seems like. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it is. Yeah. If I'm building a purely gaming rig, I'm still going to Intel. Yeah. And especially if you play games on release day, if you want the least downtime or problems on release day for games, generally you want to go NVIDIA and Intel because their drivers kind of get first first draft. Like there was a period, I think it was like two weeks, where Intel, or I mean uh, AMD chips couldn't play Destiny 2, right? Was it that long? I thought it was like a couple of days. Yeah. I think it was a little, I think it was a bit longer than that. Yeah, it was like almost two weeks. It wasn't like a, yeah. It wasn't like months, but it was definitely like a solid amount of time. Yeah. And Bungie had to fix that, right? It was like yeah. AMD wasn't coming around saying, oh... Yeah, <laughs> let me <laughs> let me fix that for you. <laughs> exactly. So that those are the only problems that end up happening with. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. if you care about being on the cutting edge with games as they release, then that can be an issue. But yeah, if you don't care, like if you can wait, if you can wait a week, then most yeah. things get patched. Yeah. If, exactly. if you're doing anything, and and when I say that, if you're by building a gaming PC, that you should go Intel. I only mean the high end too. Right. Because as soon as you go to like the mid range, you're back in AMD territory. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Even with high end right now, it's basically the same. It's with Intel. The same. Yeah. It's you're getting a slight edge. Yeah. Exactly. But when you're, you know, when you're on the high end, that's what you're looking for. Slight edges. Yep. You know, like true. You know, when I overclock my 2080, 2080 Ti, I'm getting what? Three to five percent better performance. Yeah, but then you add that up with the overclocked nine ninety nine hundred K, and that's another three to five percent, and you know faster memory. That's another three to five percent. You know, Suddenly, like, you're ray tracing <laughs> at four K at a solid seventy FPS. You're good to Almost. go. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> oh, living the life. <laughs> uh, so something is coming out this week that I think What's a that? lot of PC players you're excited about, Briar. You said in the past. Briar, Briar's like, I have no idea. What's don't know, what, I don't it's know a what you're talking about. about. Let's know what we're so excited. <laughs> what am I about to bring up? Oh, my God. Monster Hunter World Iceborne on PC. Oh, yeah. It's out. I think it's out. Is, Is that out today? Saying? No. I think it's out. I, I think, think it's it out. out yesterday. No, I think it's out in a couple days. Oh, okay. When, I saw it listed on Steam. So maybe that's the pre-order. Wednesday, Thursday, probably. Yeah, Wednesday, okay, Thursday. Yeah. yeah. The ninth. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ninth checks out. Thanks, uh, Yeah, the ninth Thursday. So I fully crafted um, a full set of Safajiva armor and weapons and all that. This is all mm -hmm. end game Iceborne stuff. And mm -hmm. <laughs> man, that game is just too damn good. That game is phenomenal. I can't wait to get back into it on PC. Yeah. I, you better stream it, Briar. You better. Yeah. I okay. want to be watching. <laughs> the problem is, I got to start from zero on PC because I. Oh, that's even more fun. That's actually okay. Monster Hunter on PC. That's okay because basically you have to kill uh, Zeno Jiva. I think that's the name of it. You kill Zeno Jiva, yeah. you get to Hunter rank sixteen or something like that, and then you could automatically go into Iceborne or start the Iceborne World Quest. Um, yeah. Because once you get into the Iceborne stuff, that armor that you start crafting on like the first or second um, monsters immediately negates all your other crap that you had acquired in in uh, high rank you're not all gone you're not gonna use it it's just done okay yeah the new stuff is 
considerably better just already. Like that's how I want it to be, to be honest. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's great. Perfect. Exactly. So you'll be able to That's kind of one of the problems I have with Destiny is I'm still using shit from <laughs> year yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Exactly. So um that is available on Game Pass. Um I'm sorry, Monster Hunter is available on Game Pass. On the PC? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm look I'm I've got Game Pass open. But not Iceborne. Iceborne you have to buy the expansion. Not Iceborne. Yeah. I'm looking it up, but it's so good. And it's a game oh. that you can step away from for, you know, even a long time and you come back and you do one hunt and you're like, oh yeah. Basically. You're, yeah. you're right back in it. It's, oh, it's so good. Because um, I'm now leveling up the guiding lands so I can get certain crafting pieces and get my uh, master rank up. And it's just, it's such a good game loop. It's incredible. Yeah, it really is fun. Uh, I'm a, I'm a dirty liar. It's not available on PC. It's just available on Xbox. Yeah. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, PC players are going to have a fun time jumping to that. There's been a lot of people coming in chat talking about, yo, excited about PC release. Can't wait to dig in. Oh my gosh. Iceborne hunts. There's a lot of people who have been waiting. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be good. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm excited to get back into that world. I haven't played it since launch on the PS4. Yeah, it's worth. Mm -hmm. Big time worth. Yeah, and on PC. And I can't wait to see it in like high refresh rates too. <laughs> like, yeah, it's that nice. was my biggest problem with the game at launch was just the mm -hmm. stuttering. What I remember is going from console to PC. It felt like it was just frames. It didn't really feel like much else was changed, like color depth or things like that or shadows. Just it's basically yeah. the engines unlocked for high frame rates. Cool. Yeah. Um, I I'm did in. see that there is like a texture pack that you can get oh, for nice. PC. Um, a high res te texture pack. Yeah. Okay. That's so you cool. Can, you can get that. I saw a video of it on Twitter of one of the Monster Hunter creators that I follow, and that is what definitely makes it look different. Ooh. Is it is it official or is deeper. it a mod? I don't know for sure. Okay, chat, help us out here. Is chat, it a, chat will know. Is it a mod or is it official? Yeah, because that makes me very. I'm gonna interested. say it's probably a mod. Would be my guess. Peaked my. Interest. I mean, how long can it really take to start over? <laughs> oh, it's official apparently. It's my official. official. Oh, that's awesome. My save 37 gigs for a texture pack. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's that's a good texture pack. My wow. Monster Hunter save has 450 hours in it now. Wow, that's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not it's not like Destiny One numbers, but it's pretty no. good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's more time than I put in The Witcher Three. Oh God, I am episode <laughs> three of Witcher right now on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, What's the, how many episodes are there total? Eight. I want to say eight. eight. Yeah. Oh, that's not that many. Okay, so yeah. three is actually you're getting I'm taking my time, and it's so good. <laughs> you're you're enjoying it. Oh my god, I'm loving it. It's incredible, man. I can't wait to see. I really more. liked it too. I I like that it doesn't it doesn't take itself so seriously like Game of Thrones. It's a little more lighthearted, but it is like you know characters have weight. They have stuff going on. The acting is a little uneven. <laughs> but I like overall, I really do like it. Yeah, I could see that with the acting being uneven. Um, man, the first three episodes, though, there's been some really intense scenes. So I don't know if yeah. I feel like the lightheartedness in there. I mean, I do feel like the characters coming through that are technically lighthearted. So I, I do sense that. I just I feel like the production value in the world, like it does make you want to go back and play the game. It does. Just yeah, you're on you're on a Witcher contract with girls. <laughs> you're like you're seeing yeah. this. You're like. I should play the game right now. I should go do a Witcher contract. <laughs> there is there is a new mod for Witcher 3 that uh, puts Henry Cavill's face on the Witcher character. Oh, I heard about that, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> That's actually great. That's cool. Yeah, so I've been yeah, I'm watching I, that. I installed it on the Xbox One X. I'm like, should I just play through this? I'm like, if I'm going to do it, though, I'm going to do it on PC with mods and everything. You, you can should really do it on the Switch, Briar. Game. Yeah, play it on the Switch. That's not going to happen. <laughs> is, I love my Switch, but <laughs> like I only really want to play games that kind of are Switch compatible or like built for the Switch. I, uh, not necessarily built for the Switch, just like low fi enough that the Switch. I don't feel like I'm taking a huge hit in like I see, yeah, frame rates or resolutions. Like like I was saying, Mortal Kombat 11, it looks awful. <laughs> like. Uh, if you hook it up on a TV, like I don't know, I honestly I think it might be running like 480p. It looks awful, and like the 
<laughs> there's a there's a mode in Mortal Kombat 11 called I think it's called the Crypt. Yeah, yeah. It's actually like a 3D run around kind of thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. And on the Xbox, you know, there's this like big moonlit skybox and it's really pretty. On the Switch, it's just gray. <laughs> it's gray fog. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, well, something's got to go. Let's just cut that entire texture map out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really rough. That's I mean, pretty funny. it's I, I guess it's impressive that they could get it to run at all. And I love my Switch. Like, I have, like, the, the hoary pads, so it's a little hoary? more comfortable. Hoary, yeah. That's Is that not how it's pronounced? Brand. <laughs> I'm just saying, hoary. Oh, Briar, when, when Briar says the word anything that so he has four. his side bitch in the living room <laughs> and, and his hoary, hoary switch hmm. my side bitch is a little hoary <laughs> <laughs> it's a switch pad pro it's, you know it's like it's like joy cons but bigger and like you know adult size horse. yeah it looks nice <laughs> adult yeah. size horse yeah. yeah I mean yes <laughs> adult size hoary <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah okay. So I love the Switch, like yeah, blasphemous. Like that's what I want to play it on. Uh, you know, any any Nintendo game, obviously. Like I was enjoying the hell out of uh, uh, Legend of Zelda. Yeah, oh, whatever the new one was. The th- yeah, <laughs> Link's Awakening. Awakening with the Thank macro you. shots. <laughs> yeah, tilt shift shots. Like, yeah. I was enjoying the hell out of that. Um, but man, like playing ports. I don't know. I th- I think the Switch is actually in trouble because, like, it's going to stop getting ports when the new console is coming out because they're just not going to be able to. Do oh it. yeah, good point. You know, the PS5 and the Xbox X Series X Series. Xbox Why did they do Series that? X. Xbox X Series X. Yeah. yeah. Like that's they're just not gonna be able to do it anymore. It's it's gonna be like you develop this specifically for Nintendo, or it's an indie like eight bit. <laughs> yeah. You know. But even what was that uh Castlevania game? Bloodstained, mm-hmm. Ritual of the Night. Is mm-hmm. that what it's called? I mean, even oh. that ran bad, and that's a 2D game. Well, it's a 3D Yeah, 3D, 3D, 2D pixel type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that was an optimization issue on that, but I hear what you're saying. Especially, the disparity is going to become huge between the next gen games. I mean, there's eight K on your ten thousand dollar monitor. I mean, precisely, (laughs) right? One hundred forty four hertz, eight K. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with bacon. (laughs) (laughs) We're gonna have to get an eye upgrade just to see. (laughs) Right. That's true. That's the next step. Yeah, I'm going to have to get cybernetic eyes. That, that is what makes me super excited about the next gen, is seeing those advancements in gaming where it's just, this yeah. clearly wouldn't be possible in previous gen. Like, that is, I want to see that. Sony, I think, had the best example when they said, look, like, just having an SSD in this thing enables us to create worlds where we don't have any loading. Yeah. You can fly across a map as Spider-Man and never see a loading screen, and the map can be huge. And just because we can load the data faster from an SSD mm-hmm. into the, you know, onto the screen means like we can create bigger, awesome worlds. Yeah, it's really cool, and that's exciting. You know, do you, how much of that is lip service versus reality? Do you think? I don't know. You know, like it's a good question. Destiny Three could it not have loading zones between like all the different parts of the EDZ? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because they can just stream it off of the disc faster. Yeah, I mean it's obviously mean, it's, it, it's obviously going to be a huge upgrade, but yeah, are all games suddenly going to take advantage of that? I, I feel like there's going to be a lot no. of old technology that's still going to be. Let's make sure everything's in the pile when we need it, and now let's show the thing. It always takes a while for the developers to take advantage of hardware, right? It was like the games that are coming out now for the PS4. Well, it's, this is a weird generation because we got the mid-generation upgrades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Pro. PS4 yeah, Pro and the, the One X. X. Yeah. yeah. But obvi- so obviously it'll look better than what we were getting at release. Yeah. Well, it's- I, I was underwhelmed at the release of the PS4 and the Xbox One X. Like, 4K TVs were a thing. And those they supported it, but like not really. I I feel like at the time, PS4 and Xbox One were like mid-range PCs at the time. You think? Yeah. 
like mid range, like not not cutting. I think edge. that's being generous. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, actually, it is being generous because it's like a slow Athlon chip that's in there. Yeah, mm, yeah. yeah. I mean, and the Xbox One was expensive. It was five hundred dollars. It was a very expensive. Well, it had the Connect though, yeah. and that thing was a success. Oh, look how much you have gotten out of that. <laughs> Xbox, record that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the connect. I, I didn't even check. Oh yeah, it does. The Xbox One X still has the HDMI in too. Oh for. Because so, remember when they first announced the Xbox One, it was going to be your whole home media your device, media right? center. Yeah, you're gonna, yeah. You're going to plug your cable box into it, and you're going to watch TV on your Xbox. Yep. Yep. That that port <laughs> is still there. Yeah. So you can do that. Have you still? ever plugged anything into your Xbox? <laughs> no. I think at the time I didn't even have cable. I don't have cable now. Yeah. Like I haven't had cable in years. No. For... I've used Apple TV for probably the last five or six years. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> TV <laughs> achievements. Oh, my there? gosh. <laughs> Did they really have TV achievements? Did they? <laughs> Like if I you wouldn't watched be surprised. an episode of something. <laughs> yeah, you're watching. Congrats. You watched you your first hour. You completed The Witcher. Woo. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised because, yeah, what their whole marketing thing when they first came out was this is the ultimate, like, TV gaming. But they were heavily focused towards TV and movies. And mm-hmm. Do you remember you know. the E3 press conference for the Xbox One where they didn't hardly talk about games at all? Yep. No. Like, it was all about TV. And yeah. everyone was like, I hate it. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> They talked about like uh, game sharing and how you wouldn't be able to play games if your console was offline. And PS4 comes out and, with a little like ad that's like, "How do you share games on PS4?" And you just, it's just a dude handing a copy of the <laughs> game over to another dude. It was such a slam dunk for the PlayStation Four and that oh, E3. I forgot yeah. about that. That's crazy. They yeah, they had a thing where like you couldn't play the games if it wasn't online because it, like you got a, a license from yeah. it. Yeah, it was like people what were a disaster. so mad. Oh, it was awful. And I remember there's like some some quote by a Microsoft executive. It might have been Don Matrick where he was asked, like, what about people like we have soldiers that are like, you know, on submarines and stuff who want to play, you know, Xbox games. And his answer was, well, the Xbox 360 still exists. <laughs> <laughs> That's the equivalent of like, go play strikes. <laughs> wow. But I mean, Microsoft is in a much better position going into this console generation. Oh, like they, way better. Yeah. They're knocking it out of the park. They got all these developers making brand new games. Like, I, I really think we're going to see a lot more Xbox exclusives on the Xbox One X than we did mm-hmm. on the Xbox Series X. They got like five. Microsoft. I know, right? That? It's like AMD and their numbers, man. Um, yeah. They've got like five studios, dedicated studios to make I it. I think it's more than that. I want to say it's like 10 or. Yeah, something like that. I'd have to look it up. They've like, done a complete a 180 lot. and completely doubled down on gaming entertainment for the Xbox. Yeah, and the Game Pass is so compelling. Mm-hmm. It's so compelling. And they've got their uh, their Stadia um, service. What is it called? On Microsoft X Serve? X Cloud? X Cloud. Thank you. Oh, X Cloud. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I know that people don't like this, like, whole. Uh, like a server-based gaming thing, but I gotta tell you, like, it is, it's really fucking cool to be able to say, like, oh, what's this game like? And just be able to, like, start playing it. You don't have to download it. You don't have to install it. You don't have to patch it. You're just like, oh, uh, you know, Tefty's playing uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. That looks cool. Let me check that out. And, like, mm-hmm. in seconds, you're playing it. And that, that's really compelling. Yeah. And if you love it, then you can download it and get the best version of it. With Game Pass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've I've actually had a lot of people come in talking about Stadia working for them in chat, which has yeah, been interesting. Same. Yeah. I've seen it a lot, actually. Yeah. Now they, the hardware they, they have works said, great. Yeah, they have said that it uh, is network dependent, where like if they go right and start watching Netflix, if someone else starts watching Netflix, it just <laughs> it becomes like unplayable. But when yeah. it's a controlled setting on their network, they know what's going on in their network, it actually runs really well. So Maybe as a first shot, like it's mildly successful, just not the reception. Stadia, Stadia's problem isn't the hardware; it's not the tech; it's the pricing. They just yeah. fucked it up. The pricing, they yeah. completely stumbled. If they had a service like Game Pass, where if you're paying fifteen dollars a month, you could play all the games on Stadia, right? Mm-hmm. 
it would be so compelling because you don't have to download anything. The hardware is cheap. Like it, you're just paying like a service to play all these games. And like, I'm, you know, there's a lot of people out there who want like hard copies and they're collectors. And you know, you want your best experience. Then yeah, I mean, this isn't the best experience that you can get. Yeah, for that you get to have like a three thousand dollar gaming PC. Yeah, but you know, for 120 bucks to be able to play you know, 60 FPS destiny or, you know, the newest samurai showdown or red dead Re- revolver, red dead revolution, R- red dead two, red, <laughs> <Whatever the fuck. laughs> red, red dead, dead red dead revolver, red <laughs> first you forget Cade and now you forget red dead redemption. <laughs> what the hell Briar? <laughs> As you oh, should have. I saw. I saw it on Twitter. You, the people were upset. Uh huh. <laughs> I almost made you a meme in my chat. What is it for me lately? <laughs> <laughs> revolver was the first one, right? Yeah, the very, very first one. Red Dead Revolver. Yeah, that was like even before before Rockstar took it over, right? Uh, I don't know that. I, I don't know what company it was. It was Red Dead Revolver, then Red Dead Redemption, then Redemption Two. That's funny. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's like, a, it's a really compelling way to play games. And like, as a, like, again, like how my Xbox One X is aug- augmenting my, my overall gaming experience. It's not my sole gaming experience, Yeah, but it adds, it's an additive experience. Mm-hmm. I see Stadia or um, xCloud as totally like another version of that. Yeah. If I can just load up xCloud on my Xbox in my, t- in my living room and, you know, have instant access to a what are there a hundred titles on game pass? If it was just, if X cloud and game pass are linked together, which I think they should be, if they're smart, mm-hmm. like that is super compelling, super compelling. Yeah. Extremely. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard, um, from people that like, just can't spend a lot of time at home. There's been some people who are like currently going through hospital stuff and they're mm-hmm. using stadia to play when they're in hospital or people who just work a lot and they're very rarely home, but they can catch some breaks during work to play and they're loving it yeah and they're, yeah. they're probably a little bit uh less critical of how it performs if that's the only way for them to be able to be playing yeah at least i'm playing right at least i'm playing yeah yeah exactly. like at yeah. least i can still do my hobby with my limited time you, you can load it up on a tablet or a uh a, a pc or like a laptop and hook up a bluetooth controller and be able to play you know your game and that's awesome that's really cool yeah you know it's I think it's especially for me, I think it was really smart that they got destiny in there as a launch game for stadia because it just is so compatible with that lifestyle. Like, you know, I want to log into destiny every week to make sure I'm getting the stuff. I'm going to see Zer. I'm like, I'm not missing out, but you know, I'm away from my console and I don't want to travel with a PlayStation because that's a pain in the neck. Yeah. But a Chromecast is tiny and a controller. Yeah. You can just throw this in your backpack and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. That being said, though, I used mine at a hotel, and it's mm, not great. <laughs> <laughs> was it playable? So, no. Mm. Not no hotel I was unfortunate. Yeah, I didn't have hard- hardwired uh, Ethernet in that hotel room and the Wi-Fi. I think I was in the... I was like next county over from the wi-fi hotspot. <laughs> you were stealing McDonald's Wi-Fi down the street? <laughs> yeah, it was bad. <laughs> you were one step away from being unbroken in the crucible. <laughs> <laughs> all right i was doing pretty good yeah <laughs> oh, it turns out uh, yeah i was doing better than normal that's weird i couldn't see anything but it didn't matter <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't kill me it was crazy huh yes i'm really excited to see what x cloud's gonna be like I, I want i know there are people beta testing it i don't have an android device so i can't beta i can't be in the beta test mm-hmm. um but i'm i'm people people who have talked about it publicly have said pretty good things about it that's good. But to me, it's about the pricing. They got to nail. They got to include it. They get, Game Pass and xCloud have to go hand in hand. Right. It seems like the perfect situation. It'd be weird if they, they want extra for that. Well, I could see them wanting extra for it. Yeah. But, but if they you can't already, see what Stadia is doing. You can't have like subscription after subscription after subscription of stuff just to play all the same games. Welcome to my Apple stuff <laughs> seven <laughs> apple bills me like seven times for like ten dollars pop <laughs> for all this stuff gotta cut got. that stuff back man but like what is it now with with uh xbox is like 
Xbox Live is a certain amount of money, and you can add Game Pass to it, and you get a little bit more. And then if you want Game Pass on PC, it's a little bit more, mm-hmm. right? So like Game Pass Ultimate, which includes Xbox Live, is like what twenty bucks a month, twenty five bucks a month? I actually don't know. I haven't looked at the pricing for Ultimate. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. I, I know I, I was. Think I just saw it on my credit card statement. I think it was like around <laughs> thirty bucks. Hmm. I don't know. Which is a lot a month, but it offers so much. Yeah, Yeah, that's if you're doing for Xbox and PC, right? Yes, I have Xbox and PC and Xbox Live. That makes sense, yeah, because I think I paid 15 for just PC. Yeah, for one platform. That's what sounds 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 familiar for me. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes sense that it would be 30 for two. Yeah. Yeah. But I I also am not going to get billed for it for another six months because I bought an Xbox One X that had three months of it and I bought an Elite Series 2 controller. Uh, which I've been bragging about a lot because I'm so elite. How how's that new controller? <laughs> it's pretty good. Did you have the previous right? one? It's, no, I did not. Okay. Because the previous one did not have Bluetooth. Oh, gotcha. Right. And like a regular Xbox controller has had Bluetooth for years now. Mm-hmm. You know, the launch ones didn't, but the the new ones all do. Yeah. And I use my Xbox controller on on my iPad. I use it on my Xbox, you, I use it on my PC. Are you playing Apple games? No, I play, uh, I have the Steam serv- service on my iPad. Okay, gotcha. So I can play PC games over <laughs> Wi Fi yeah. on my iPad, and it's fucking dope. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. <laughs> it is the future. It is living in the future. Uh, and that's just local. So, like, that's just your Wi Fi. You don't have to worry about, like, you know, contacting a server somewhere in the, yeah. you know, in New York or something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I I always thought that was cool, but I use my Xbox controllers for more than just on an Xbox, so it never really appealed to me to spend 150 bucks on one, on an Elite Mm -hmm. Series 1. But now that they added Bluetooth to it, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely getting this. And I got to say, it's a really nice controller. It's D-pad, I think, is... It might be my favorite D-pad since, like, the SNES. You know, it's like, it's a really strong D-pad. So Um, I only have experience with the 1. It's the Series 1. I'm yet to buy the Series 2. I plan on it at some point, because that is my go-to controller. You're elite series one, not series two, huh? <laughs> yeah, and my right bumper broke. Okay. It's like it did. Yeah, from playing Dark oh, I'd Souls. Be mad. <laughs> oh shit! I was like, dah, 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 and then suddenly, oh, you're clutching. Is you're just see? I find when I was playing uh, Sekiro, I was holding the controller so hard and like clenching it <laughs> that my hands hurt so bad when I got off. I was like, my, my knuckles hurt. <laughs> oh man, all sorts of bad. Yeah, my my buttons yeah. started getting loose. And I was like, oh no. Is my Clenching. lead controller having a problem? So now, when I buy my next one, I'm going to go to Best Buy and get the replacement plan. The two-year replacement so plan. every time Absolutely. something happens, I'm like, this thing needs a replacement. Give me another. Yeah. That's what I I did that with this one. And I, I do that with every mouse I buy because for some reason, I go through mice super fast. Interesting. Yeah. Too much it's nice, plan. though. Like, It doesn't come with enough thumbsticks, though. You know? Like, oh, yeah? <laughs> Briar yeah, wants yeah. seven on the controller, is what it he's saying. It comes with like <laughs> one, two, four, five. It comes with six. Oh, yeah. That's what mine came with. It was like but low, medium, and high. Long one. Oh, really? No, there's no medium. And that's what I want. I want medium. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, medium. Yeah. No. yeah. Oh, like right. Because it's concave and convex on the domes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't really like the convex ones. Like I like the standard Xbox ones that are knurled on the edges. Like I like those. What's the, the? But I, I just want like a medium length one, you know. What were the the addition of the extenders on the sticks? What were they called? The, oh yeah, those were. Uh, you buy aftermarket. I can't remember the name what of those. Called control freaks. Yeah, control freaks. You need control freaks on there, man. Yeah, man. That's, that's not elite. That's not elite <laughs> series two. Control freaks are not elite series two. <laughs> They're for elite people, Briar. Yeah, elite people. I, I'm spoiled because I have. I have a bunch of um, scuff controllers mm-hmm. and scuff. They send you a bunch of those like uh, sticks, Adapters. a bunch of different lengths, yeah. mm-hmm. and they're they're not as easy to replace as these. So these ones are just magnetic. You just pull them off, put the next one on. Yeah, it's but it's not that much harder on a scuff controller. It's like maybe a it's a one minute process as opposed to like five seconds. Yeah, right? yeah. But like I've been able to customize those exactly how I want them. So I, I do say I will say I like the stick or the button placement on the back better. Yeah, those feel so nice. And also the the pressure to activate one of those is just like click, click, click. A little click. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. And I like 
the the shoulder buttons and the triggers are metal and they just feel nice. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just a, it's a good feeling controller. Exactly. It, it's heavy though. It feels like a piece of machinery. Like it's made out of metal. Yeah. Substantial. That's why Briar feels so elite. Yes. <laughs> Very elite. Elite Briar. Series two elite. Yeah, I'm gonna have to buy one of those pretty soon. It's nice. It's nice. I you know, there's still some things I like about my um scuff better. I have mm-hmm. the scuff what's the newest scuff box controller? The impact. No, that's the that's the PS4. Oh, that's one. the PlayStation one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Prestige. The prestige, prestige controller. Yeah. Because I, I've just gotten used to the sticks. Although these have adjustable tension on the sticks, which I really like. So I just gotta get the right length on this. And it'll be perfect. Okay. Yeah. Which I, I think I'll have to turn to the aftermarket to do. Right. But fuck, this is a hundred and eighty dollar com- controller. <laughs> I gotta find more parts. Yeah, exactly. Fragadin in chat said, we need a Briar Feels review for all tech accessories. So anytime you're reviewing something, we want Briar Feels Elite. Briar Feels Sad. <laughs> Briar Feels Incompetent. <laughs> That's how we rate Briar's. Briar, Briar Feels like a Macintosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's what I did. Uh, I have the same processor that Tefty's building his computer out, out of. And it, I just turned it into a Macintosh so I can run Final Cut Pro on it to, for video editing because I have nice. missed Final Cut Pro. How easy and, was that? Very nice. Uh, or how difficult? Very easy once I found the right instructions. Okay, yeah. Uh, which, uh, I don't know. I'll link them somehow. Maybe ask me on Twitter and I'll put a link on there. I don't know. It, it was very easy, but it's very specific. You have to do it perfectly for the hardware you have. Right. So your processor, doing it on AMD is different than doing, doing it with Intel. And you have to have the right, they're called drivers, mm-hmm. are called kexts in the in the Mac Hackintosh world. So you have to have the right ones of those. And some hardware is supported under certain versions of Mac OS, but not under other versions of Mac OS. So you have to make sure. Right. I had to buy a new video card. I had to buy an AMD Radeon 5700 XT so that, I was getting proper because NVIDIA is not supported ever since Mojave, which is like three years old now. Oof, rough. Yeah. So you got to be careful. Yeah. If you're building it's, a it's not. Yeah. It's not as easy as install Windows, but it's also not like rocket science. Like you can figure it out with a little bit of Google food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did a few Hackintoshes way back in the day, which was yeah. nice. It, it, yeah. It's. You know, it runs perfectly. The only thing that doesn't work, I think, is Wi-Fi on the board. Which do you think you'd be better off spending fifty thousand dollars on a new Mac Pro? If I had fifty thousand dollars that I could throw at a new Mac Pro, (laughs) maybe I would do it, and I'd be smiling (laughs) while I was doing it. Maybe I would even drive the Mac Mac store in my Lamborghini. (laughs) Like I'm gonna put this in my living room as my media station. (laughs) Here's the thing: I don't know what world I live in. Where am I at financially where I need a computer that, that is that powerful? True. That I am not hiring somebody to do shit for me. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> like the guy I hired to do all my video editing, he, maybe he's buying a 50K I, iMac. <sighs> yeah. But it ain't me. <laughs> if you're spending 50 plus thousand dollars on an editing rig... That's technically a salary that you could give to somebody for a whole year for doing work for you. Right? And I'd rather do that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'd rather give somebody 25K <laughs> and then have 25K in my pocket. <laughs> Boom. Capitalism. I'd like yeah. to get it. I, I don't know. Like, financially, I can't understand how, how you justify that computer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Or how I would justify that computer. From a consumer standpoint, it makes no sense. If you're a studio owner, you know, if you're into... Uh, motion picture editing and all that, and you have high budget clients and all that, then yeah, it makes sense ish. Yeah, well, I actually, <laughs> yeah, even then, it's like, yeah, even, even then, then, even then, if you're a responsible financial, if you're a CFO that gives actually cares about your company, then you might be like, you know, we could have 10 other editing rigs instead of this one editing rig, <laughs> yeah, or we can get you like a, a fairly nice computer and have a render farm. <laughs> true so not not just one person is using this 50k 
everybody who we're doing who's doing any video editing can just like you know send their edit off to the render farm and just get it back from the render farm yeah exactly which i'm sure would cost less than 50k i mean i'm not talking like crazy google servers but like what the fuck that's a lot of money did you hear they're making a gaming pc apple, apple? yeah that's the rumor. I think it's a rumor. Well, they have an Apple Studio now, right? And they announced their first game for their Apple Studio. What? The Apple Game Studio. I had Studio. not heard of this at all. Okay. I'm well, Brian, get to Google yeah, I okay. think it's like an MMO ah, or something. What? Apple's making an MMO? Of, it's some type of RPG. 2020 <laughs> is wild, guys. For sure. It's an MMO, but in, instead of looting, you just... you. You take everything that's in your house and you take it out so that you eventually just have this like Johnny Ive white interior. Okay. And you win when you have absolutely nothing left. <laughs> it's the reverse of collecting. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Google's, I don't see it. But yeah, I mean, that's the rumors. It's going to be about five grand. Let me Google. And it's going to be an Apple gaming computer. It's going to look like a Mac Pro, apparently. Five thousand dollars for a gaming PC that's Apple exclusive yeah. that only plays Apple games. <laughs> what? What? Are you having a hard time? <laughs> with this? Oh man! I don't understand. What's, what's your reservation here? <laughs> I mean, I thought like the Mac Pro is disconnected, but this—if this even has some merit of being true—that holy crap! Right. <laughs> well, just like, huh? And you of course, you're going to you need their six thousand dollar monitor to hook it up to <laughs> and you're gonna oh need a thousand dollar stand so that, you know the monitor's not the just lying stand, flat the on the desk. like this oh no that's stand the pro the tower monitor. now yeah, if i can play right. angry yeah. birds at 8k 144 F fps then maybe i'll yeah. consider it okay yeah yeah maybe we'll i see. mean that's the dream right that 8K is the dream. Angry, Bird. angry birds 8k <laughs> 144 <laughs> this is the future I can, uh, that's another thing. Like, I love, I love, I love Apple stuff. Like, yeah. my iPhone, I love it. I love my Apple Watch. I love uh, Mac OS. I think Mac OS for production stuff, like for daily use as a computer, I like it far better than like Windows 10. And Windows 10 is like way better than it, like Windows 8 it's true. was, yeah. right? Oh, it's come yeah. a long way. Yeah, yeah. It's not like it's awful. But for gaming, like, my, I got a really nice gaming PC. It's about as high end as you can get. It didn't cost anywhere near five grand. <laughs> what about the nice and, shiny metal that they're putting in there? Well, okay, yeah, that's nice. I do like shiny metal. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there is aesthetically, I always liked how Macs look. Like they, they just look cool. But they, look they can't crazy. even use NVIDIA graphics cards, right? So you're gonna be stuck with AMD Briar, graphics. Right, that's called exclusivity. All right. It ups mm. the price. It's true. Look, I bought a, I bought a fifty seven hundred XT. It was like less than well, maybe it was over four hundred dollars. It was in the four hundred dollar price range. But I think it's not nearly as fast as my twenty eighty Ti. What ha, What about in an Apple PC, an Apple gaming rig? It might be. Maybe they'll have like a they have a dual like a dual GPU version of that card. I think in the Mac Pro. Okay. So there's it's one card with two GPUs on it. This, Maybe they'll do that. This sounds like like SLI. Like I'm having a dream about a side quest episode dream. talking about an Apple gaming PC <laughs> that I wake up and from. And Mark's gonna be like, so I bought it on Sunday, <laughs> had some time with it. <laughs> Aside from the fact that I can't play all the games I actually want to play on it and plays these other crappy games I don't care about, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> Expensive, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so when I built the Hackintosh behind me, yeah, one of the things I wanted to do is make sure everything was working okay. Mm -hmm. And you can't because it's so hacked together, right? It's like you can't just run hardware monitor because the OS you're basically fooling the OS into right. thinking that, that it's it's a computer that it's not. Right. So that yeah, yeah. you can't see the processor, you can't see the graphics card in like something like hardware monitor. So what I decided to do is I got some games that I downloaded a long time or I bought a long time ago in the Mac in the store, like the Apple store. And I'll just download those. So I download Borderlands, which <laughs> unbelievably I bought for a Mac like a long time ago. <laughs> one or two. <laughs> so I, one. So I downloaded that. It won't even run. It won't run on the current version of Mac OS, Catalina. Oh boy. 
That's called exclusivity, man. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure I played like 60 bucks for that game. <laughs> How much does that suck? Yeah, that sucks. Like, is that going to happen if you buy it? Yes, that is absolutely going to happen. You have to keep upgrading. That's the thing with Apple, right? Like, you have to keep getting the new. No, hotness. you don't. Yes, you, you don't do. have to. <laughs> they they want you to. They want you to. <laughs> right? If you want you that latest operating cracker. system. Yeah. If you want that latest good good that you're talking about. You're like, oh, this is so nice. We're this is my daily stuck driver. in this like consumerism loop, and they've got us fish hooked. <laughs> Bri, oh. I think we should just go get a boat or something and just live well, the, off the land. The new watch stays on all the time. So, yeah, man, let's just go off the grid. Let's we'll just go van off life, Watts. We'll get van. a van. That's true. Van life. We'll start van. converting it to a compartment. <laughs> <laughs> DCP we'll live, van life. We'll just live in the van. We no can still rent. make YouTube videos. Yeah. We oh, can yeah. post about our van life. DCP van life van journeys. Life. Van life is huge on YouTube. Is it? It is huge. We could yeah, do Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. It's very, Damn. it's very interesting. <laughs> 2020 van life. Here we come. <laughs> You know, when you watch, when you go to van life, right? When you look for van life on YouTube, don't watch the most popular people. You want to go scroll a little bit down. You want to find the guy who's struggling a little bit. You know, okay. <laughs> I, he's the guy that watched the popular people and they made it look so good, right? Because they're Instagram models and they're, they're, they're living like, it look up at in all this Europe. Aesthetic. It's beautiful, sunny. Oh, amazing. Oh, yeah. You want to look at the guy who watched that video and decided that looks pretty good. I'm going to do that. But he's got a shoestring budget. He bought a used van. He didn't have enough money to put heat in the van. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no Chicago. toilet in the van. <laughs> Why did I go to Tahoe in the middle of the winter? Oh, God. What was I thinking? That's the guy you want to watch. That's going to give you the real dope on the van life. <laughs> <laughs> That is one of the, the best YouTube rabbit holes I've gotten into in a long time. Yeah, I haven't. I, one of my kids was watching it with me. We're just, we're literally standing here. I have a TV in my office. We're just like, I'm like, look at this, look at this. Just, people are living in a van. And we stood there and watched like five videos. <laughs> just like standing there like gawking. <laughs> my last rabbit hole with YouTube was tiny houses. So oh, it's a similar man. thing. Could you do it, Watts? Could you live in a tiny house? I don't know. See, a lot of them, they're like, yeah, here's our house and it's really beautiful on the inside and they've they've designed it in a way to where they have maximized their space with a lot of smart storage stuff. Yeah. But then they have a giant outside area. Yeah. With like a like fire pit in- and and a, couches and a jacuzzi. And they're, so they, they're kind of, they go to the tiny house to spend more time outside almost right. but they still have like a very nice home to go and sleep in yeah so could you do it if i had good internet maybe <laughs> <laughs> internet maybe a i question. could be living outside in a, in like a, a very a warm place probably have to move it's probably wouldn't work here <laughs> yeah have a very good internet connection i'll have my pc outside that'd yeah. be amazing it's stream yeah. setup outside <laughs> You could do like a wall on the side of the house that rotates, so your office could be inside on a nice day. And it also just rotates. So and my background outside. is the forest. Beautiful. And then with this is with five five G technology, you might be able to actually stream from it. Maybe. I, I told my wife, "Oh, I could definitely have done this when I was single. I couldn't do this with you. There's no way. <laughs> There's no I way. can't live that close. This would this would cause an instant divorce." <laughs> Because you think about it, one person put, lays a sock on the ground one time, and you're like tripping over that sock until it gets picked up, no matter where you go, because there's only six f- square feet of space in this place. <laughs> you have to be very, very cleanly. It forces yeah. you to be cleanly and minimalistic and yeah. spend a lot of time outside. Yeah. 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 Sorry, guys. Streams canceled today. There were some bears. So I'm kind of going to lock my door. <laughs> there's a cougar out back trying to eat us. Going to have to end the rain coming. Rain, rain, rain. Got to go. Could you do it, Tafty? Could you do a tiny house? Ah, man. That's a tough one because I have a lot of technology in my house. (laughs) And I don't really want to give up all my cool technological toys. However, I have thought about how awesome it would be to go on like an extended road trip. Like a three-month. In like a van or a a a, like a Yeah, like a three-month road trip and just traveling and being creative and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I, sure. I think it'd be awesome. And, and like the cool thing about those tiny houses are like the vans is that you're not paying, 
you know, you're, you're reducing your bills in such a way that you can, you can afford to work less. Right. Exactly. Like, I think yeah. that's really like, it's like, this is the opposite of what we were just talking about with the uh, Apple stuff is like, Apple's always wants you to spend more money and get like the newest, the greatest. This is like anti-consumerism of like van life or, or, um, um, tiny houses is like, maybe I don't want to spend my entire life working to buy this house and then fill it with shit. Yeah. Maybe I want to spend my life enjoying myself and exploring and like enjoying the great outdoors and time with friends. And I'll work enough so that I can afford, you know, like sustenance, but I'm not going to bust my, I'm not going to work this like nine to five job every day just so I can have this stuff. Yeah. You don't want to be slaved to your stuff. You want to, yeah. You want to have that balance where like you get the things that you need and to get the things that make you happy, but you don't have to think, like, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a lot of reason why people did it. They didn't want, they realized that they would be paying bills just forever. And they're like, we just don't want to do that. So we're going to take yeah. our, you know, it's not, it's, you need some money to get a tiny house completely done. But once you're done, you, you own it. You're not paying like 500,000, especially if you live in a very expensive area. Yeah. If, you li- if you're living in an expensive area and you're like, we're never going to be able to actually own a house. Yeah. You're like, screw it. Let's go make a tiny house. Yeah. 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 That was before I got married. That was kind of like the path I was on is I wanted to get as debt free and as like. As simple as I could get, like, I, I didn't want to have any bills that I didn't need to have. I didn't want to have any like I didn't want to have anything that could weigh me down like if i wanted to just up and go somewhere i could just up and go and for me i think i was on that path and then i you know i veered off because having a family it's you can't really you can't force a family to do that <laughs> you like, know what i mean i like, was totally on that path and then uh, i had a family <laughs> and I, and I fucked it up <laughs> <laughs> suddenly you see what kids, you have to do wife, i just you had to condition your children to be hippies and then they'd be totally into the idea of being like, yeah, let's go on a three month van trip. Let's just, you know, I don't know if it's if it's common for uh, people of their age, but they're super anti- they're not anti consumerism. They're they just they've never had access to TV. They've never it's not that they don't have access to TV. They've never watched like cable TV in a way where you're constantly like getting advertisements shoved in your face and they don't have that drive to just like fill up. Like shopping for them for Christmas is actually really hard because they don't like they say you say what do you want for Christmas I'm like I don't know like I I, I got everything <laughs> like, what, what do you, need? <laughs> you know like they're, they're super got video games it's I don't interesting know. I think yeah. this this next generation is going to be interesting because they've grown up in a very different way to the rest yeah. of us with social media and like you said not not the type of commercials that we've had, but having more access to politics around the world and news around the world. It's, it's a whole different upbringing. Yeah. I I find them to be very empathetic to like what's Mm -hmm. going on with other people, like way more so than I was at their age. And also like more aware of the environment and like, Mm -hmm. I I honestly think that this is going to be like a really strong generation. Like a lot of people kind of, I feel like a lot of people make fun of the millennials. Uh, you know, it's they don't know how to dial a phone. Well, you don't need to dial a phone anymore, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like all that stuff. But like what they're the way they're growing up, just connected to everybody in a way that I think is really interesting. I think it's I, like I got really high hopes. I, I think this could be like one of those great generations. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, yep. it's a big social experiment and see how it works out. Stop calling me Boomer, though. What the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> My mom got upset about that. I was making, we were talking about that over um, Christmas, making fun, and she was like, what? Dude, what is this Boomer thing? Oh, my God. It's really funny. Anyways. I, I think it, it's even better because they're like, <laughs> they know it upsets you because they're they know what it means, and they know that they're using it wrong, but they can see that you're getting upset about it. That's just a, it just encourages them to keep doing it, you know? <laughs> oh, good. Uh, is that the show tonight or today? It, it might maybe Man, so. What a weird show. It was, it was just, a bit it was weird. Like just all tangent. The, weir- <laughs> the weirdest thing was <laughs> Apple gaming PC. 
for a whopping five thousand dollars. If that ever becomes a real rumor that manifests into yeah, an I'm actual gonna, Apple I'm store, buy one. I'm gonna put it in my van and I'm gonna go cross country. That's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna put it in my <laughs> tiny house. That's gonna be all that's in there. Oh my god! I'm good to go. That's great. Well, that's the uh, first episode. Okay. The first episode of Tony's Harry where you learned about van life. I hope right. this was helpful. Van life. <laughs> Look at what happens when Eric's isn't here. This is awful. <laughs> this is true. Because what have I been playing? Monster Hunter. I could tell I could talk about that. Same. The game we've talked about for like every week for the beginning of <laughs> Yep. All right. Well, side quest complete. Yeah. Side quest complete. Van life. Van life complete. Or in the works. <laughs> well, Van life coming I soon. I just pre-ordered my Apple gaming PC. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been SideQuest episode number 31, first of the decade. 2020, yes. all that stuff. If you want to find more of me, you can talk to me at Teft on Twitter and catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. Me. Yes. That's probably me. I am S5000 Watch. You can find me on Twitch, YouTube, the Twitters. Miss 5,000 watts. Uh, I'm Briar Rabbit. You can find me on Twitter trying to convince Tefty to turn his new computer into a Hackintosh. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, it's a strong, it's a compelling argument. No, I'm, I'm definitely curious. That's for sure. You're uh, Hackintosh curious? I'm, I'm, hack I'm, curious? I'm, hack, I'm hack curious. That's for, yep. <laughs> definitely. You can always do boot, man. It's not like a decision that gets. Exactly. It's not permanent. <laughs> no, no. You can always flip flop. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for watching guys really appreciate all the support thank if you're you watching everyone. live or on YouTube or on the various podcast places and shout out to our Twitch subs and our Patreon supporters thank you very much for all the support guys thank you everybody we'll see you next week for another show see you next week for van life for van life <laughs> bye guys maybe we'll be in a van yeah it's the van episode <laughs> bye everyone bye <laughs>